Hi, my name is Trevor Perry, and I'm the engineering manager at Kremen Incorporated. Today, we're going to talk about one of our main core competencies, Swiss machining. Behind me is one of our Swiss lays. This is a Citizen L32, and we're going to talk about some of its capabilities, more specifically why Swiss lathe machining has its advantages over conventional machining. So inside here, if we look inside here, a conventional lathe sticks the raw material out, hanging onto it with a chuck or a spindle of some sorts, and the cutting tools come across the raw material. In the Swiss lathe, we have what we call a guide bushing that supports the raw material, and behind that guide bushing is the main spindle that will hold and control the raw material. On this gang arm, we have our OD turn tools, our cutoff and threader and our other static tools. And this gang is always positioned right in front of the guide bushing. This allows a rigid support, a close point of cut at the guide bushing, and allows us to turn long continuous runs without dealing with tool deflection and controlling tight tolerances. So if we move back behind the guide bushing, inside here is a main spindle. This main spindle is designed to hold on to up to a 12 foot bar of raw material and push that bar into those static tool holders. To support that, we have a bar feeder. And inside the bar feeder, we have a channel that nests the raw material, keeps it lubricated and supports it as that main spindle is controlling it and moving it inside the machine and spinning several thousand RPM. So this part, we make both on our trucker style lays and our Swiss lays. The advantages of uh, running this on our Swiss lays is not only going back to the rigid point of cut, but it's efficiency. So on a conventional lathe, the machine has to come up and it has to cut across each of these features while this is hanging out in air. Cut across each of these features. Once it comes through to a certain point, the sub spindle will come up, pick off on the part face off the part from the raw material, come back, and then finish working. Once it's done doing the rest of the machining, the features that it's intended to do on the sub spindle, you'll eject the part, and then go back and start the next part on the main spindle starting over again. Now Swiss lathes, we have a, we have a main spindle and we have the sub spindle. The controller allows us to simultaneously work both spindles at the same time. So while the front spindle, in this case, is coming up, turning our OD, threading, milling, grooving, and coming up to get ready to do the part up, the sub spindle will actually be over on the opposite side, drilling the ID, doing the chamfer, and deburring anything if we have it programmed to do that before it ejects it into the part ejector. Once that sub spindle's done and ejects that part, it'll come up and wait in front of the main spindle to grab that next part, part it off and come over and repeat. So this part on average takes about five and a half minutes to machine using a different raw material than what I have in my hand. But it takes about five and a half minutes of, of machining to complete one part on our trucker style lathe. On our Swiss lathe, because we have the rigid support, because we have the dual spindles, the main spindles and the sub spindle, we were able to complete this part in less than two minutes, offering a huge advantage, a huge efficiency, and overall a better quality part. Swiss machining is a core competency at Kremen Incorporated. Between our machine's versatility, capability, and our machinists and programmers' knowledgeability, we're able to utilize these machines in machining your complex, intricate parts complete in one operation. 